Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Feathers again today. I've had another bonefish fly. It's a bonefish ghost. Uh, very straightforward fly. Very few materials. It's ideal for um, super skinny water where you need a, a soft presentation. Spooky fish. Worth tying a few up. As always, there'll be a materials list below uh, in the description, along with a link to social media and my Patreon page where you can go to support the channel and find out about um, future giveaways and be eligible for them. So I've got my hook and my vice, it's a size 6 Amakatsu SL11 3H. I'll just run on some fine nylon uh, mono thread, see uni, fine clear, but use whatever you like. I'm just making a bed for the tail, crisscross wraps. Um, gives you a really nice secure tie in. So, I'm just going to take a bit of zonka, just wrap it zonka, and line up some fibres. I'm just coming in my scissors. Trim the hair away from the, the hide. And I want about a shank length off the back for the tail, something like that. So my tying points are just just beyond the point of the hook, maybe halfway between the point and the barb. Got a shank length of rabbit. And then I'll just Wrap these butt pieces down. And you don't need to be fussy um, about this look been tidy or neat. Just that's enough. Right, I've got that wee tough tail that doesn't want to flatten down. Don't even think about it. Next for the antenna I'm just using some crystal flash. Uh, the original I believe was shrimp pink, but I'm using fluorescent orange. Fold it over the thread, single strand, tie that off. You want to cut this the same length, twice the length of the rabbit, it's so the same length again, sticking out. And that just gives you that wee sort of fluorescence, just a wee extra piece of attraction. I'm going to make a loop, uh, a dubbing loop here. make it now and then set it to the side and I'll come back to about one third of the way along the body I'll take my wee eyes it's just an island dumbbell um, you can buy them ready made in them thighs um, I didn't have any in to hand the right size so I just made these by melting some twenty pound hard nylon, hitting it with a pen, and then some black nail polish. Uh, sorry, with a black pen, and then just some nail polish over the top and let it dry. Just figure eight that in about a third of the way, as I say, from front forward from the tail. It nice and secure, and then run your thread to the front, put a whip finish and just get that out of your way. The body um, is just EP shrimp dub, so I'm tying it in this dubbing loop, so I'm going to wax the loop, right? Now, The wax is only giving you grip at the fly tying, right? I've had people ask me numerous times and people say, oh, well, the wax just disappears. It does disappear, it probably melts away in tropical temperatures, but you need the grip at this stage. So, 
I've got a mix here of just blended equal parts tan and pink uh, EP shrimp dub and I'm just going to load the dub and loop And you'll sort of start to get a feel for how much you need. Um, that's about right. That's maybe. And I'll, I always go for a wee bit more um, so that I can then trim it and brush it. So I'm just twirling my, my look. I'm going to make it really nice and tight. so tight that I snapped the nylon, but that doesn't matter, the loop's fine. I'm just going to wind it forward, figure eight it through the eyes, you can periodically check, see what it's sitting like. Just keep going until you hit the front. And you should have this kind of big shaggy ball come in, catch that off, two or three turns is plenty, Let's fold it back, another few wraps over that just to lock it in place, trim it away. And the beauty of using this clear nylon is you can actually just pull that dubbing back out for your next dubbing loop. It's a bit, doesn't really work so well if you're using um, like, uh, like normal thread, if you, you know, like a, a flat thread or something. So I'm just going to give this a wee trim to get the basic shape that I want. Because this is quite a long fibre dubbing. Now just to take away the sort of crispness of the cut ends, I'll come back with the, the Velcro again, just to rough it out slightly. And bring it into that, back into, the, into a sort of nice shape. Um, how much you rough it up is entirely up to you. You get a nice sort of translucency of the brushed out fibres, and then you've got the sort of denser centre of the fly. It tapers onto the tail, gives you a nice sort of suggestive shrimpy profile. Now you could leave, just finish the fly there, but I'm going to add uh, a weed guard, just a single strand, a £20 hard nylon. Crush the end flat and we're just going to poke it up through the eye. So three wraps, fold it back. Secure that in place. can if you really wish take a wrap behind it and then I'll come in whip finish it twice 
You can use a tool if you want, I just I don't want to pick mine up. I like to, with the, the monofill on the thread, I like to pull it and then relax it and then pull it again. Just to really tighten the knot. Come in and I'll trim it. Now, just to tidy up the, the head, because it's quite a shaggy, fuzzy fly, I'll take it out of the vise. Pull everything down. I'll just take a lighter. Just come in and very carefully just melt anything back that's going forward to the eye just gives you a nice neat finish and then we'll flood the front of the head cement and really flood those thread wraps take a wee scrap of feather Pull it through and clean the eye, and that's the fly done. You just need to trim your weed guard or your coral guard, and that's you. Bonefish Ghost. Really, really effective. Um, possibly not very fashionable or not so commonly used, but well worth a place in your box. I would encourage you to tie them up, and they'll catch more than bones as well. Um, a lot, of wee, a lot of species that are on the flat that you might want to take a cast at would eat this. So, hope you enjoyed that, hope it was useful. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up below and please subscribe to my channel. Tight lines guys, bye!